Jeremy Cook here with Embedded Computing Design. Today I'll be taking a look at NI's new MioDAC USB 6451 Data Acquisition Unit. The device features a 20-bit resolution and can take up to 1 million samples per second per channel. It's certainly impressive on paper, but how well does it work in the real world? All right, so here's the box with the NI stuff on it, the, with the NI MioDAC in it. All right, so we got this. There's no real um, manual, but you've got a QR code that you can scan and go to different things. Got some different videos and different stuff on there that has some nice resources for you. The uh, unit itself looks nice, nice, nice solid feel to it. Looks like a metallic case with maybe some powder coating on it. Has a number of analog and digital inputs and even some outputs, which is which is nice. And this particular unit is the, let's see, USB 6451. So that's um, not quite the highest end model, but the second high, the, the highest end model uh, out, of the, out of the four that it has. Also it has some nice rubber feet on it, so makes a nice, yeah, very nice. So we have these, which are the um, kind of the push in input output things. So you can actually push, uh, say like pins like this into it. To get that out, it comes with a screwdriver. And these inputs, inputs and outputs, they slide into here. All right, so yeah, they slide in like that, and then you can pull them out. Yeah, they get a little screw freeze for each side, so you can, you can, I guess, screw these in if you need to. But if you don't do that, you can pull them out. And then you also have these, um, I don't know what they're called exactly, but sort of like a strainer relief slash um, unit maker, I guess, um, with a zip tie, I believe. So if you put this in here, so if you make all your connections, say you put them through there, you can put it like that, and then like this, let's see. So you've got your connections, and they can come out here. I think that's the idea. And then you screw this down, kind of nice, you can grip it like that, make a nice, nice um, quick spin if you need to. And then from there, Plug it in, kind of like a cartridge. Yep, and then put it in there. It's kind of nice. And then all your wires can come out of there and you've got kind of an all-in-one unit. And you can, I guess in theory, screw it down with these outer outer terminals or outer, outer screws. Also, one last thing in the box, you've got a USB cable. This is USB C to type C3, C3.2 Gen 1. So that, that's pretty neat. It's a nice cable and then it's got this screw that you know, you can screw in, actually puts it in to the front, and then you can screw that in if you need to, to keep it secure. It's pretty nice, and you got some sort of lock here. So, those are some nice accessories and everything to help you get started. Okay, so after much setup and logging on, looks like I'm finally able to, to take on a project. So, I've not seen my hardware, it's not plugged in, so I guess I need to go ahead and do that. Use the convenient thumb screw here. All right, little gravity, little screwdriver. It's pretty cool, that's not coming out. And this will go into my USB-C port on my remote computer. Well, I've got it working now, now that it's taking readings and properly hooked up. Yeah, power button's happily blinking away. Here I've got my device set to, to take differential measurements between the positive right here and the ground on the bottom. So it's the two, the two at the top and the bottom are the differential pairs for input uh, A0, I believe. So I've just got that running off a uh, external voltage supply. You can also set things up as reference to a, a ground here, reference single-ended, but you'll have to switch that out in the software. So right there, reference single-ended. So for my first uh, official experiment, I thought it'd be cool to hook up the solar panel that I got from my parts bin to the positive and negative. And you can see there, I'm getting um, just about two volts, 2.7 volts on it. So after an hour or so, I'm gonna go ahead and check this and see what kind of data I got off this uh, solar panel running indoors. Yeah, it should be, should be interesting. I think it's taking samples once every 10 seconds. So the neat thing about this is that you can export this, or you can export this, or you can view it inside the um, the uh, data logging project inside FlexLogger Lite. So that's it's pretty pretty neat, pretty convenient if you just wanna make, make some quick readings. So this setup is meant to measure the uh, voltage drop across this 33 ohm resistor, and which will allow us to get the the current going to the Arduino Nano. 
or Arduino Uno. I'm gonna measure with a blinking LED so that I can kind of see what the power difference is between on LED and off LED, and just see how much this Arduino Uno uses. It fits in there nicely. There you go. And then I can hook the uh, positive negative, I'll put that at five volts into the uh, Arduino Uno. I guess I need to program it first. All right, it's blinking under USB power. I'll take that out, hook it up to um, external power supply. Negative, positive, and this positive will go through the 33 ohm resistor, which is how we can, over this shunt is how we can measure the actual current going into it. Got the 33 ohm resistor there, got the input power there, ground there, and then I'll hook this up, straddling the input and the 33 ohm resistor. So, input, still blinking, and then the 33 ohm resistor here. So at five volts, I've got this hooked up, and you can see it's, it's very in between 0.78 and 0.88, roughly. You can see a pretty, pretty good pattern there of, of you know, about 0.9 when it's on, presumably, and point, I don't know, seven, seven off when it's off. So you can see that kind of going through there. So, so from that, we can back out the power, how, how much, how much current it's putting out, and also how much power based on the V equals IR equation and a known resistance of 0.33, roughly. The Mio DAC performed well in my limited testing, and given NI's reputation, I'd expect it to also work in more challenging applications. The build quality is what you would expect out of a premium device, and four Mio DAC performance options allow you to buy the right unit for your needs. For a versatile and capable data logging solution, the Mio DAC line is certainly worthy of consideration. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook from Embedded Computing Design, signing off.